Okay, physics students, uh, so this is the last um, video for the section 2.1 motion. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of wrap up um, projectile motion here. You've already, we've already talked about uh, the independence of horizontal and vertical velocity components and how um, when things are either going upwards initially at an angle, projectiles going upwards initially at an angle, or directly horizontally at no angle, um, how you can treat them treat the way that it moves in the vertical and horizontal is completely independent. The way that it falls, the way uh, in terms of the time that it hits the ground, is exactly the same as if it were just uh, falling from rest straight down. And of course, the horizontal velocity never changes. Neglecting air resistance, the horizontal velocity never changes throughout its um, path until it hits the ground or until it stops. So what I want to talk a little bit about in this video is about um, trajectories and mathematically uh, what exactly kind of trajectory uh, a um, projectile motion follows, and I just kind of gave it away. It's a parabola. I'm going to show you here how it is a parabola, okay? Now, as I just said, in the vertical, um, we use basically these two equations, okay? Or we can use actually any of the kinematics equations for acceleration in a straight line, uh, a constant acceleration, and of course the acceleration in projectile motion is always the acceleration due to gravity g 9.81 meters per second squared. In the horizontal, the x component of the velocity is always the change in displacement over the change in time, and that's a constant, okay? I rearrange this equation, and I get the green equation here I'm calling number two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually, um, for t in two, I'm going to put into one right here, and right here, okay? And then um, it turns out being a parabola, and what's interesting is that sy is actually a function of sx, or in other words, the, um, the vertical displacement is now a function of the horizontal displacement, okay? So remember, u sub y, v sub x, g, uh, those are all constants, so you end up with a quadratic equation. Remember, s sub x is your variable here. So here is s sub x squared. All this other junk is just a constant. ui over vx is also a constant. Um, so that's kind of interesting, right? So this is actually proof that, um, that it's a parabola. And what we'll do in class is we will talk, we will show you, I'll show you a little bit about how to verify this on a calculator, your graphing calculator. And we can also play around a little bit with this FET simulation where you can actually try to hit this target by... Um, by changing the initial velocity and the angle. It's kind of fun. Then you can get a feel for kind of how one changes for the other. And you can also introduce the effects of air resistance in the simulation. Really, really fun and cool. Okay? I just want to remind you um, of the, um, um, the motion diagrams that we talked about before. Remember when we talked about um, the change in velocity is always in the same direction as the acceleration downwards? It turns out, mathematically, we can talk about this a little more in class maybe, um, in order for this to be true, um, it actually has to be a parabola mathematically. It's kind of interesting. So there's that to kind of jog your memory a little bit. And we'll play with the projectile motion one in class, OK? So a summary of the key concepts is kind of bringing it all together behind projectile motion. Number one, we always neglect air resistance unless stated otherwise. Two, uh, the, the y component, the vertical component of the velocity behaves as an object in free fall. And we use the equations of motions as appropriate in the vertical. Okay? Uh, the horizontal velocity, v sub x, remains constant. Therefore, the horizontal and vertical velocities are completely independent from each other. The direction of the velocity at any, against, at any instant sorry, gives the direction of the motion of the projectile, of course, like anything moving. The projectile makes a parabolic trajectory in the air. When I say parabolic, I mean mathematically, it's a parabolic function. It's a quadratic function, okay? A few more useful things when working these problems, which you may or may not have noticed um, before at this point. Um, when throwing an object horizontally from rest, the path is one half a parabola. We've already kind of seen that. When throwing an object upwards at an angle from rest, the path is a full parabola, assuming that it comes down to where it started. It could be more if you say do that off a cliff and it goes down lower than where it started. And we want to use trigonometric functions to determine velocities when it hits the ground as always because to, to determine the velocity you need the length or the magnitude of that vector that's pointed down into the ground at an angle and you also have to tell me um, you also have to tell me the angle that it makes to the horizontal. Now, if I plot y versus x, or in other words, 
a vertical displacement against horizontal displacement, okay, at equal time intervals, it looks like this, right? So this is a parabola. This is the parabola. This is the equation of the parabola I just showed you in that first slide, okay, when, when I derived for you from putting uh, t from equation 2 into equation 1, okay? At any time, v sub x is a function of t, and that's u, u cosine theta, of course, because that's the x component of the initial velocity. And of course, using, uh, using the equations of motion, uh, the vertical velocity at any time is u sine theta minus gt, and that's, and that's an application of one of the um, equations of kinematics. Now I have to show, I have to tell you something very, very important here. Um, if you were to graph a vertical displacement, um, a vertical displacement against time, it's going to look very, very similar to this. So you need to make sure that when you're looking at these kinds of graphs, because they both look like parabolas, right? Because remember, our second equation of most motion, s of t is ut plus 1 half at squared, that's also a quadratic. Um, obviously, very similar to the quadratic where um, the, the y displacement is a function of the, of the x displacement, right? Because that's how we got it. So just be aware of what's on your what's on your horizontal axis, if it's, if it's t or if it's x. It's very, very important that you understand the difference between those graphs and don't be fooled by the fact that they look very similar, okay? All right, so just another example. One more example to kind of um, sum things up here. Uh, you know, we're doing lots of examples in the homework study packet. Go ahead and pause the video and try this one on your own. Okay, so place kicker kicks a football at an angle of 40 degrees right here. There's your angle. Uh, the initial speed of the ball is 22 meters per second, going up at that angle, ignoring air resistance, and find the maximum height the ball attains. Okay, the total time the ball is in the air and the horizontal distance of the range covered by the ball in this diagram, it's R. Okay, so here's my SUVAT table. I got the, the maximum height, um, and I'm using equation 3, I guess this is. I got 10.1 meters above where the person kicked it. Total time the ball is in the air. Uh, we want to add the up and the down, okay? Um, Here's the case where I'm using symmetry, and I'm using the, uh, the fact that one half of it um, to go all the way up is actually half a parabola, okay? So I find the amount of time to get up, well, that's exactly equal to the amount of time it gets down. So that's a very useful, um, that's, a, that's a use of symmetry. So if it's 1.44 seconds to get up to its highest point, um, then the total time is 2 times that, which is 2.88. And then, as usual, here's my procedure for finding the horizontal distance r, total time in the air, initial velocity, and the x component. I got uh, in the x direction. I got 48.5 meters. Okay. Now, um, just want to talk more about air resistance. You are required by the IAB to understand the effect of air resistance on parabolic motion, and it's very, very intuitive. This is this is not anything new. Okay. Um, we've already talked a little bit in class about the effects of air resistance. Now, for a body in free fall. Remember that the effect of air resistance um, obviously decreases the acceleration because there's another force acting upwards opposite to the motion of the, of, the, of, the, of the object falling downwards. Remember that air resistance increases the faster the object is moving, and it results in an eventual um, terminal velocity. Okay? The resulting uh, vertical versus horizontal displacement graph would look something like this, okay? So in this, this graph right here, air resistance is not neglected. And the one with the black points, air resistance is neglected. Now, we almost always, always, always neglect air resistance, okay? You'll never be asked to solve a problem mathematically where we don't... Um, where we don't neglect air resistance, okay? Because that would be too complex mathematically and it wouldn't be within the scope of the class, okay? So the most likely IB questions you'll get will be ones with graphs, where they might have a graph like this, and they might say sketch the result, sketch the, the graph if we consider air resistance, so forth. A couple of things I want you guys to notice. Number one, the path is no longer parabolic. It looks like a parabola, but it's kind of squashed on the right-hand side. The maximum height is less and the range is less, very obviously. And the angle at which it hits the ground is steeper. It's going down at a steeper angle than it went up. You see that? So, like I said, I think it's it's quite quite intuitive this whole idea of air resistance and how it affects the actual motion um, of a of a projectile.